Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in this series where we discuss building an S3 data lake using AWS database migration service. My name is Suvendu Kumar Patra. I am a senior data architect here at AWS. As part of Data Lab Resident Architect program, I help customers with their data strategy and cloud migration journey. In previous session, we discussed how DMS is used to modernize, migrate and replicate data from different data sources. Also, we learn how Amazon S3 is used as the core storage component in AWS Data Lake. In this session, we'll see a demo on how to migrate and load ongoing changes from a relational database into your Amazon S3 Data Lake using AWS DMS. So before moving to the actual configuration, let's first understand different DMS components and how DMS works. At a high level, while configuring AWS DMS, we follow three simple steps. First, we create a replication instance. Then we create source and target endpoints. This is nothing but your connection information about your data engines. And once your endpoints are ready and connections are successful, we create one or more tasks to migrate data between the source and target data engine. DMS task can be configured for one-time migration that is called full load or you can do a full load plus continuous change replication that is called full load plus CDC or you can simply replicate only the data changes. Also please note during full load DMS connects to the source engine to read or offload existing data and migrate those data into target engine. It may create a file or a table depending upon the target database type. But to read ongoing changes from the source engine, AWS DMS uses engine specific APIs to read changes from the source engine's transaction log. For example, in case of Oracle, DMS will read ongoing changes from redo log files. For SQL Server, it will use your T-log files. So for CDC to work, you need to ensure your source changes are captured and retained in transaction logs for DMS consumption. So this is how DMS migrates data from different sources to target data engine. All right, so now you know how DMS works. Now let's see how DMS fits into an Amazon S3 data lake architecture. So this is a reference architecture that shows how DMS is used to migrate existing data and replicate continuous data changes from variety of data sources into an Amazon S3 target bucket. We can call this S3 bucket as your raw data zone. This data will be further used by downstream data processing services like AWS Glue, Amazon EMR or Amazon Lambda and many other services. And finally, we have a curated layer which can be further used for data analytics or for your ML use cases. I hope this architecture helps you for a big picture understanding. Now let's start the demo. In this demo, we will build an Amazon S3 data lake by continuously replicating data from a Microsoft SQL Server database to an Amazon S3 bucket. You can refer AWS DMS documentation page for Microsoft SQL Server as a source for detailed instruction. So for this demo, I have already created an RDS SQL Server instance which we will use as the source database. AWS DMS will require full logging to be enabled in source SQL Server instance. This can be done either by enabling MS replication or MS CDC. In case of RDS SQL Server, it only supports MS CDC. I have already pre-created a sample database which we will use for our replication. Also, I have pre-configured the database with all required steps for MS CDC. I have created a user which we will use during the replication for DB access. For detailed instructions, please refer AWS DMS documentation. Now the source database is ready. So let's move to the target setup. For S3 target, we need to create an Amazon S3 bucket where all the downstream objects will be stored. As you can see, I have already created an Amazon S3 bucket which we will use as our target destination. While using Amazon S3 as a target, we need to ensure the account used for the migration 
must have write and delete access to the target damage in S3 bucket. So to manage S3 resources, we need to create a policy with all required permissions and attach it to an IAM role. And later the same IAM role information will be used during target endpoint creation. You can find a sample copy of the policy document in AWS DMS documentation page. Make sure you replace the bucket name with your bucket name. I have created the policy document with required permissions and attached it to an IAM role. Please make sure to make a note of the role ARN. We will need this at a later stage while creating the target S3 endpoint. Now both source and target are ready. Next we will launch an AWS DMS replication instance. Please note your S3 target bucket and DMS replication instance both needs to be created in same AWS region. I am already in the AWS DMS console. I am going to create a replication instance. Click on create replication instance. Now give it a name. You can put a description here. Then select an instance class. In this demo, I am going to choose a DMS C5 large instance. We'll discuss more about DMS instance sizing in next session. Then choose an engine version. It is always recommended to use the latest version. I am going to go ahead with the default allocated storage. Then I am going to select my default VPC for any production workload or for continuous replication, we always recommend to use a multi ag setup. Then depending upon your source database location, if it is outside VPC, you need to enable this option. Under advanced security and network configuration, you can set up your subnet group, your preferred availability zone, and your security group. In this case, I am going to use the default security group. Then you can also configure your KMS key. For maintenance and tag, I am going to use the default setting. Now next, click on create. So the instance creation will take some time. Once the instance is ready, the status will be changed to available. So once the replication instance is ready, we'll create both source and target endpoint connections. Okay, now the replication instance is in available state. Make sure the traffic from your replication instance IP is allowed to your source and to your target database. So let's go ahead with endpoint creation. So let me first create the source endpoint. Click on create endpoint. You need to select source endpoint here. In this case, my source is a RDS instance. So select RDS DB instance. Then from the drop down, I'll select the appropriate database. Then here you can give a name. I'll just say source DB here. Then the source engine is Microsoft SQL Server. That is correct. For production, we recommend to use AWS Secret Manager for better security. For this demo, I'm going to provide this information manually. So the server name will be auto populated as the source here is an RDS instance. In case it's an on-prem server, you need to provide the server name or IP and the port and then the username and your password you need to provide. So in this case, for this demo, I had earlier created a user called DMS user, which we will use to access the source database. The database name is DMS sample. Then let's move to the endpoint settings. So endpoint settings are basically extra connection attributes which we can configure during endpoint creation or we can modify it later. We will discuss more about some of the endpoint settings in the next session. So to configure endpoint settings, you have a EG wizard option or you can manually enter the parameter details. So I'm going to go ahead with the default setting without making any change for endpoint settings. Then for the rest, KMS key and tags, we will use the default settings. Then at the end, there is a test endpoint connection. So make sure you have selected the correct VPC and the correct replication instance. Then click on run test. So this connection test is going to take some time. 
once it is done you should see the status as successful okay now my connection is successful so click on create endpoint so you can see now my source db endpoint is ready now let's go ahead and create the target endpoint click on create endpoint select target endpoint now in this case our target destination is an amazon s3 bucket now you need to provide a name so i'll just say target s3 then select the target engine so in this case it is amazon s3 then you need to provide the service role arn this is the same role which we had created earlier now you need to provide the bucket name this is the same bucket which we had created earlier the bucket folder is optional now again here we have endpoint settings we will discuss some of the useful s3 endpoint settings in the next session then i'm going to leave tag as it is then test endpoint connection so make sure your vpc and replication instance names are correct then run test this is going to take some time now it is successful so click on create endpoint so with that our source and target endpoints are ready now all config steps are complete finally we need to create a single task or multiple tasks for data migration or replication from your source to the target engine in this case from a microsoft sql server database to an amazon s3 bucket okay i am in aws dms console click on database migration task then click on create task give a name to the task then you can choose the replication instance so this is the replication instance which we have created then choose the source database endpoint then choose the target database endpoint then the migration type as you are planning to migrate the data plus the delta changes so we need to select migrate existing data and replicate ongoing changes so that is full load plus cdc next task setting for this demo we will use the default settings let's enable the cloudwatch log in case of any issues these logs will be helpful during migration and ongoing replication these are some of the advanced debugging option we'll discuss about these debug options towards the end of this video series next advanced task setting for this demo i'm not going to make any change under advanced task setting but we are going to discuss about some of these options in next session next table mappings so this is the section where we select the actual data which we want to migrate or replicate so click on add new selection rule you need to enter the schema name so in our case this will be dms underscore sample you can provide a specific table name or you can use the wildcat character to migrate all the tables currently present under this schema then you can define an action which should be include here because we want to migrate all the tables then you have additional options you know like your column filter you can define a range or you can define a conditional operator here so based on that the data will be migrated next we'll discuss about transformation rules in one of the upcoming session next you can generate a pre migration assessment report so this basically helps you to identify any potential migration issues before you actually start the migration task so for this demo i'm going to skip it next you can decide when you want to start the task in this case i am going to choose the automatically on create so click on create task so the task creation is going to take some time now the task is in running status and you can see the progress here now you can see the initial full load is complete and the job is still active to replicate any ongoing or delta changes to get more details about the job execution click on the job then under table statistics you can find the list of tables which are part of this job also you can see the job load state so in case of any error you can see the load state will be marked as error also you can see the number of rows which have been migrated from the source to target so this will help you for a quick comparison 
Now let's quickly check the target files. So let's go to the S3 console. So you can see under your primary bucket, DMS has created a folder with your schema name. So all our tables will be created inside this folder. Now let's see what's inside this table. So you can see by default DMS has created this target file in .csv format. So this is the initial full load dump file. So for CDC, the file naming will be little different. We will see through a quick demo. Okay, let's run some sample DML statements. So we have done an insert, an update and a delete on seed type table. Now let's go back to the S3 console and verify how DMS has handled this DML operations. Now you can see there is a new file which got generated under DMS sample seed type table. So now let's download both these files and we'll quickly review the content of these files. Now you can see both the files. This is the first dump file which got generated. So this has our complete data export. And this file got generated as part of our CDC. First you can see a difference between the naming of the file. Then second you can see an additional column in the CDC file. So this is basically the type of operation which we have performed. So this will be very helpful while you merge the files in a data lake environment to produce the final curated file. That's all for this demo. I hope you find this useful. To summarize, we have learned how to configure data ingestion pipeline using AWS DMS to build an Amazon S3 data lake. Also, we saw how DMS names CSV files during a full load using an incremental hexadecimal counter and it uses a timestamp value while generating CDC files. Also, we discussed how DMS stores full data dump and how it stores raw data change information in CDC files. Thank you very much for watching. See you again in the next video where we will discuss AWS DMS best practices specific to S3 target.